This one's so ugly, it's gonna throw several dirty state Pennsylvania troopers. That's redundant. Multiple district attorneys. <laughs> And most of our local politicians in jail. Snap, crackle, pop, conspirators. So pay close attention, because about the only thing this video doesn't have... FUCKING ALIENS! When we last left off, we had just intercepted State Representative Dan Mao. Hey, Mr. Mao, I was really trying to get the word out to you about getting stabbed here in Gettysburg. Because you'll see me get chased down and stabbed by a second time violent offender. And our district attorney, Brian Sinnott, he got the guy off on ARD, which is illegal for a violent offender. So I'd really appreciate your help on this issue. What would you like me to do? Well, Dan's been a busy guy. Showing his support to other local veterans. Judging dog shows. And as Pennsylvania House Chair of Local Government. Receiving the Guardian of Victims Rights Award presented to those who have served as advocates and ambassadors for crime victims across the state. Stabbed here in Gettysburg. What would you like me to do? He does a little investigating of his own and gets back to me. Like a boss. Fucking mob boss. Instead of investigating my district attorney breaking the law, allowing repeat violent firearms offender Glenn Kessler to walk free and armed around his constituents, Dan looks into my criminal history, which only exists in his Adams County. Here, Dan mentions my first offense DUI on New Year's Day. Well, thanks for your concern, Dan, and you're right. Multiple brain injuries, severe PTSD, and a plethora of polytrauma don't mix well with drinking. I have since quit the occasional drink and no longer make brash decisions under the influence of alcohol. Like a boss, he goes on to mention charges of strangulation, assault, and harassment that were illegally applied to me and dropped twice. If y'all missed the video, The Lawyer's Daughter, here, you'll watch as a local attorney's daughter repeatedly breaks into my house and invades my property on video and plants drugs before calling the cops while I'm on probation for said DUI. Dan already knows all about this one and here he is blowing me off about it in May. Lastly, Dan mentions charges that were leveled on me for disarming a second time violent repeat offender of his pistol then getting chased down and stabbed by him. America. I had to sit in court and watch as my second time violent offender assailant illegally walks free. So, Guardians of Victims Rights Champion Honorable Dan Mao did his homework, thoroughly investigating me before providing his response that the county commissioners that are in charge of the common courts are not aware of the video of Kessler stabbing me. Well, they must not be aware that Glenn Kessler chased me down and stabbed Dad, me. In between where the tape on the walls measures up to seven foot for security camera use. So what's really strange is... Get chased down and stabbed by a second time violent offender and our district attorney, Brian Sinnott, he got the guy off on ARD, which is illegal for a violent offender. And Dan makes no mention of it. Where did his investigation go into these claims? The same place the investigation went when I informed all of the county commissioners of the conspiracy to exonerate Kessler before he received his judgment illegally on our election day. In fact, Dan is such a fraud that he even lies to himself. Sucking in that gut does nothing to lower your insulin levels. He even got himself a bona fide Duke and Bo Duke approved getaway car. Woo! This conspiracy is wide out in the open. But the truly sad state of affairs is that Honorable Dan Mao's behavior as chair of the House of Representatives local governments is truly representative of the fraud of the Pennsylvania State Legislature and the local governments. In the Pennsylvania Capitol's own newspaper, have bribery, fraud, and abuse of power become synonymous with Pennsylvania? That PA politicians have a rap sheet that would make any hardened criminal proud? They are self-admitted among the leaders in this dubious category. Me and Leo can personally attest to this. Mm -hmm. We informed every representative in the state of Pennsylvania of the proof of the gun-toting repeat violent firearms offender Glenn Kessler walking free around their constituents. Here's Rob Kaufman confirming receipt. I shit you not, nine days later he uses my email contact to send me this. As chair of the House Judiciary Committee, he approves bills to keep firearms out of the hands of dangerous criminals. You laugh, but go ahead and throw state reps John Hershey, Mark Keller, 
and Natalie Mihalik on that same pile of shit. Bullshit. So if that's how our House Judicial Oversight Committee conducts business, it's no stretch of the imagination to how Pennsylvania law enforcement has become so inherently corrupt. The mechanism they use to obstruct justice is to conspire with their district attorney to selectively report and charge crimes. Watch my video here, First Blood, local Epstein deal. How state trooper Cameron Beck fails to charge Kessler with stabbing me, enabling Kessler to get this illegally wiped from his record, even though he did this same shit two years ago. Which brings me to my next point, the Adams County cronies call in this douchebag investigator anytime they need something to disappear. Kessler so sick. I fucking called it months ago in my video, here. Cook books and burn notice state cops. Trooper Cameron Beck was brought in to investigate the death of a man found breathing, lying in the road, in the same small town as his co-conspirator, my assailant, Glenn Kessler. He has since closed the criminal investigation, as the only logical conclusion is that the deceased fell out of a moving car. What the fuck? Where's his fucking car? If he was riding in someone else's car, what happened to the driver when he lost his passenger? A passenger found breathing that later died. This is some scary shit, y'all. So we see the common thread here of state cops failing to report a crime and the DA failing to charge for it. Things starting to get a little uncomfortable? Good. Because look what else our cops and district attorney conspired to achieve. This is the story of Officer Michael Caracato, who sexually harassed a fellow female officer for years but was never charged for it, culminating with District Attorney Brian Sinnott instead opting to pay a quarter million dollars of taxpayer money for a gag order. In fact, there'd be no criminal charges at all if Officer Cortesis didn't find the evidence herself. Despite charges of felony wiretap, District Attorney Brian Sinnott offers him ARD wiping this from his record, the same mechanism he used to illegally wipe this from my assailant's record, enabling Curacado to sue for his job back within two months. Under District Attorney Brian Sinnott's directive, the circumstances around Curacado's sexual harassment were kept so hidden that an arbitrator mandated two years of back pay and to rehire him. You just heard that right. District Attorney Brian Sinnott conspired with police to not charge Michael Caracato with any sexual harassment to enable this threatening pervert to continue to police around your family. So I email Marcy's Law of Pennsylvania, informing them of House Representative Dan Mao's protection of corrupt District Attorney Brian Sinnott conspiring to protect perverts and perpetrators. And what do they do? Just kidding. It's way fucking worse than that. They give them the fucking Guardians of Victims Rights Award! What? Hold the front door. Who the fuck is this Carrie Nace gal that looks like Brian and Dan's kissing cousin? Oh snap, her day job is at a local conservative political advisor firm. Oh my god! While serving on a non-profit board presenting awards to some of the worst victims' rights offenders. About getting stabbed here in Gettysburg. What would you like me to do? Not finished. With this blatant perversion of law and decency. Let's inform the Pennsylvania Bar Association's Head Ethics Council, Victoria White, Esquire, of District Attorney Brian Sinnott's gross disregard of anything resembling the law. Hey, that pretty ready brock me. Okay. Fuck all this noise with these House of Reps chumps. Let's let some folks with some authority know about this. Yep, I emailed all these cheese dicks too. And cheese twats. Thanks for that EO comment, Leo. Leo, remember EO. And we never heard anything back. In fact, the only one that's got an excuse is Senator Michael Fulmer, former chair of the Senate Committee for State Government, winner of Marcy's Law Guardians of Victims' Rights Award. I say former because his Senate Chair of State Government, grandfather of seven, was going through some personal problems and shared months worth of kitty porn on his phone. So imagine my elation when Senator Doug Mastriano with 30 years of military integrity wins a special election in my home district. Colonel Doug is a fellow rough and tumble combat veteran and encourages us to look him in the eye and ask the hard questions. So I get right to work informing the chair of the Senate Intergovernmental Operations Committee of my county DA breaking the law and needing the state to come and investigate. Just for fun. His office responds that it's a county issue, not a state issue. But maybe I was too quick to judge as this was just one of his aides de camp foobarring this conversation. Let's look him in the eye and ask him the hard questions. So are you going to help me out with getting stabbed? The county broke the law. I need the state to come in. You going to help me out with that? Why are you running away, man? I need your help. I need your help, buddy. The state needs to come in and correct the county breaking the law. Coward! Easy, Leo. This guy's a warrior. 
He's a career army intelligence officer. Not that today's leaders are oft accused of fighting yesteryear's wars, but Colonel Doug's crowning career achievements are writing a fantasy history of World War I era hero Sergeant York and crafting policy directives on fantasy fighting Russia. Which, thanks to Doug's supreme leader, is known as the century of Russian-American cooperation. But none of this should be surprising, as Colonel Plink over here sends from the same Army Corps as Chelsea Manning, the Army intel soldier that dumped WikiLeaks, was convicted of espionage and received gender reassignment. So she's post-op? But you know what? Even though I don't condone what she did, I have a lot of respect for her. She took a stand for what she believes in. Watch here as Colonel Doug reverts to his Army training as an intelligence officer. Sir, sir are you gonna help me out with getting stabbed? Why are you running away, man? I need your help. He runs as far away from anything uncomfortable as fast as his little fobbit legs can carry him. In fact, Doug has such a history of running away from problems that it even made his fucking Wikipedia page twice. Colonel Doug is such a fraud that the same weekend he runs away from me. He unveils heartbeat legislation in which heartbeat indicates life. Bitch, I got one of those. <laughs> he just called a full bird senator a bitch. And second time violent firearms offender Glenn Kessler tried to stop it three times and is running around your constituents with a gun right now. What you gonna do about a bitch? Sir, sir, are you gonna help me out with getting stabbed? Why are you running away, man? I need your help. You can't run from Glenn Kessler, Dougie. That don't work. He will fucking chase you down and stab you. You got that right. A 20-some-odd-year-old turncoat transgender convicted felon has more intestinal fortitude than the guy elected to chair a state senate committee. So with all this noise I've made, you'd think that some law enforcement, sworn to protect the public, would investigate at least some of this evidence. And they have. But only if I hand over the investigation to Pennsylvanians. You think I'm a paranoid veteran? You're right. But my video here, burning down the animal farm, shows exactly how far the state will go to cover this shit up. I don't want this investigation to be intercepted and compartmentalized and limited in scope. Not that I'm worried someone could have undue influence in the investigation. Aight, homework time. Anybody can report a crime to the FBI. Tell them how your district attorney Brian Sinnott conspires with police to protect his cronies threatening you and your family. Think of it this way. Not calling the FBI is a vote condoning the actions of years of sexual harassment on a female officer. This is y'all's chance to show the crony wealth that this behavior will not be tolerated. If you don't call the FBI, you deserve and condone it for your family. If they're capable of doing this to an honorable female officer and a wounded warrior, what do you think they're capable of doing around your family? Go do something about it.